Our next presenter is Yvonne Cooks from All of Us or None, and she has over 20 years of experience working in prisons, uh, working on female uh, issues in prison, and worked for the legal services for prisoners and children. And she um, had a, excuse me, a BA degree from Columbia, Columbia College, and she spearheaded efforts inside the prison system to bring awareness of the AIDS crisis to women in prison, and was a key organizer for black culture workshops for FCI Dublin for 15 years. Yvonne, um, All of Us or None has organized the wonderful Band the Box initiative that we've heard about today, and we really appreciate that. So how did you get this legislation passed, and then what can we do to empower formerly incarcerated people to engage more in policy and, lead and law change and get their help? Thank you. I, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, all the organizers of this wonderful summit, and we really need more of this in the community, and I, I just thanks Jeff Adachi for all the wonderful work he does in the community. So, uh, all of us are none. We are representatives of a new civil rights movement. And I really, I, I want to see how many people in the audience are formerly incarcerated? Gosh. Well, you know, all day long. I, I started early this morning, and I have been hearing the word offender all day long. And I am so, you remember when we used to be called Negroes, guys? I'm serious. I had arguments in my family about being uh, no longer wanting to be called a Negro. So that's one of the things that we did uh, at All of Us or None. We started talking about language and what that means and what people perceive us to be when you hear different words. So we have asked that this social justice, criminal justice movement change the language to formerly incarcerated persons because it more, it's more representative of a person who has a history and not a thing. So um, I appreciate those who have taken on this challenge and we really will keep, you know, just beating down the walls talking about we want to be referred to as people. So if it's formally incarcerated, that's fine, but not as offenders. <laughs> One of the things that we did initially when uh, just a few of us, uh, Dorsey Nunn, Linda Evans, myself, several of us here in San Francisco, we convened a statewide strategy session in 2002. <laughs> And that strategy session, for the first time, brought together formerly incarcerated people who knew they had common problems, they knew we had common uh, discriminatory practices in the system that we were dealing with, and we wanted to really make a difference and, and, and tell people we want to speak on our own behalf related to the problems that we are experiencing. So we convened and, and decided, made a lot of decisions that day. One of them was to organize under the banner of All of Us or None. And we have been going strong ever since. Now at that time, that was, uh, gosh, October 2002. I had just been released in July 2002 after having served 20 years in a federal prison. So I knew what we were dealing with inside, and it's still very close to me. What we did, we came together, we organized under the banner of All of Us or None, and wh what we have done since then, we started reaching out into the communities. We did six community peace and justice summits, and in those peace and justice summits, how we organized folks is, our people, people that were formerly incarcerated, they were able for the first time to talk to politicians, to talk to community leaders, and let them know what they were experiencing and the discrimination they were facing on the outside. And this was an incredible, powerful movement for them as well as the, the community leaders. People were listening. They were listening to what 
we had to say. And as, as a result, one of the demands that came out, you know, the housing, pub, social services, all, all these, you know, things that we need, one of the things that came out that we decided to move forward that we thought we could win was ban the box on public and county employment applications. So we used that campaign to start off this movement of policy change and legislative change. And how we did that was just believing that we could do it and working with people like Jeff and, and Ross and, and the Board of Supervisors in San Francisco are incredible human beings that understood where we were coming from. And as, as a result, we banned the box in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> And this same campaign is being pushed out now in Alameda County, in Sacramento, in the city and county of Los Angeles, and we're, we're doing wonderful things. And these are, the, the efforts are coming from formerly incarcerated people. We're, we're just really excited about all of, all of the work. And I just want to thank everyone who has helped in that campaign because there have been many people, we have many allies, you c I can't even begin to name folks. So I just want to say what we are doing is so important because it's, it gives us an opportunity to not only speak out about conditions and discrimination that we face, it gives us an opportunity to go on with our lives and that's important. That's important. Um, um, the other question, quickly. I know it's been, you know, it's been a long day, and I really appreciate your hanging in there all day for this. I don't know if I could have done it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what we can do to empower formerly incarcerated individuals to advocate for needed changes. What other, other, we have collaborated with other organizations and like-minded people, and one of those is the ACLU. The, Maya Harris with the ACLU, they have put us on billboards all over the city, and I brought some uh, pictures of those billboards that talk about our right to vote, because so many people don't realize that if you're in jail, you still have the right to vote. So this is something that all of us are none and Legal Services for Prisoners with Children have collaborated with the ACLU and there's a lawsuit about it. So we're really moving in, in directions that formerly incarcerated people just traditionally have not had the opportunity to do. Now, not that we didn't have the skills, we didn't have the opportunity. Now, the 20 years I spent in prison, not one day that I ever believed the stereotypes that, that were out there about people in prison. I knew I was somebody, and I knew I could make it on the outside. You just need a chance. So, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to. I'll pass out these. I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's, it's all very inspirational for formerly incarcerated people and for everyone what you're doing. Thank you.